So the first topic we're gonna talk about is scales. I personally love my scales, but at the same time, I grew up with a love-hate relationship with them because who wants to practice their scales? Scales are, they're that one thing that's like good for you, but you don't want to do it. Similar to like vitamins, like who wants to take their vitamins? <laughs> but it's good for you. That's kind of how scales are for a lot of us. And I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this. As saxophone players, you know, we're always told practice scales, practice scales, practice, practice, practice. And it's like, I don't want to practice my scales. <laughs> But it's great to practice your scales because when I tell you, when you have a strong relationship with your scales, whether that be major or just natural minor scales, it will take you very, very far, very far, especially when it comes to soloing. So let's get into it. I want to basically talk to you about the major scale and the power of the major scale. The major scale is super important. It's very important to be able to know every single major scale and not just being able to play it from do to do, but being able to do a full octave major scale on your instrument. The major scale is so powerful, I kid you not. When I improvise, most of the times, I don't know any crazy riffs, as you guys can tell when you hear me play. I really don't know that many. I kind of just like fell off the jazz scene and I didn't really get into memorizing riffs and phrases that much i just kind of go with my scales and that's literally the basis of my improvisation so i'm here to tell you that it works it really does work if you learn your major scales i promise you it will take you very far so major scales are also really important because major scales are minor scales i know that a lot of you who are already musicians already know this but there's some of you who might not know this information and it is good to know your major scales are your minor scales so if you're watching this and you have a notebook write that down major scales are minor scales and the reason i say that is because when you take your major scale and you play from do to do do re mi fa sol la ti do ti la sol fa mi re do that's your major scale right that's one to eight it's beautiful but if you take the same scale and you start from the sixth note in your major scale which is La ti do re mi fa sol la sol fa mi re do ti la. The sixth note that is a minor scale using the same major scale. So once you have a strong grip on your major scales, if you're able to start on the sixth note of every major scale and just play six to six, that's your minor scales right there. And that's gonna open up a huge opportunity for you to be able to play on any major or minor song without even having to think about it. Because if you practice your major scales to the point of memorization, and when you have that muscle memory then you basically have practiced both your major and minor scales. And I think that's really good information to know. So if you didn't know that already, please, moving forward, think of your major scales as your minor scales. It's going to make it a lot easier for you. Let me give you an example of what I just explained because I know it can be a little bit confusing for those who have never heard of something like that. I'm going to take the G major scale, for example, and I'm going to just play the G major scale from middle G to high G back down to middle G. <laughs> That's G major, right? If I were to start on the sixth note of the G major scale, which is, you know the answer. What's the answer? You got this, you got this. Yes, E. E is the sixth note because one, two, three, four, five, six, G, A, B, C, D, E. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the sixth note is E. If you start on E, but you're still in the key of G major and you play from E to E, that's actually going to be the E minor scale. So let me demonstrate that. <laughs> relative minor so basically e minor has the same exact key signature as g major meaning in the key of g major there's one f sharp just like in the key of e minor or e natural minor there's one f sharp so when you're able to make that connection between the two scales it makes it so much easier when you have a song that you have to play that's in let's say the key of e minor and you're like what e minor how am i supposed to play that how am i supposed to understand that but then you remember that it's literally just g major then it's like boom I got this. I got this. So that's basically it broken down in realistic terms. And once you understand that information, I promise you're going to go so far. You're going to go so far. <laughs> so another thing about scales is how to utilize them in improvisation. There are three main ways that I tend to utilize my scales when I improvise. The first way is literally playing them up and down in my improvisation. Literally one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Just continue, go back down. Like in scalier motion. That is how I use my scale sometimes when improvising. That's the first thing. Number two is being able to create rhythms with my scale so instead of 
Pum 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 pum. It can be pum 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 Or it can be pum 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 pum. Like you can create so many cool rhythms with the same scale. The third thing that I use with my scales is being able to jump around from different notes. I think that is the coolest thing, and it's one thing that I did growing up a lot, learning. Um, jazz in high school is my teacher would basically tell me to take out a metronome and practice my skill but just jump around to random notes and in time and doing that allowed me to get so comfortable with every single major scale and allowed me to come up with some really cool random on the spot ideas in my improvisation so i'm going to demonstrate each three of these things for you so that you can kind of understand what these sound like in real terms so the first thing, playing my scales up and down, when I do practice my major scales, I do try and practice the full octave scales. So that means instead of just playing do to do, I continue until I reach the highest note on the saxophone within that key. Then I go all the way down till I reach the lowest note on the saxophone within that key. Then I go back up to do. So for G major, um, I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna use G major as an example. This is what a full octave major scale will sound like. <laughs> That's a G major full octave scale. So what I might do with my improvisation to be able to implement that is I would literally use the scale. That's it, guys. So I'm going to demonstrate using the G major scale, just going up and down through improvising on this one chord backing track that I have right here, just in the key of B flat major for concert, which is G major for the alto saxophone. So let me just demonstrate what this sounds like so you can kind of get what I'm talking about. That's an example of just literally using the G major scale. The second thing I mentioned was using the major scale but adding different rhythms. So instead of da -da 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 I can add rhythms. I can play one note in the scale multiple times before moving to another note in the scale. I can just experiment with the rhythms a little bit. So let me demonstrate what that sounds like where I'm playing the G major scale still but just with different rhythms involved. <laughs> technique that I mentioned was being able to skip and bounce around within the major scale using a metronome. So before I demonstrate that with the backing track, I am going to pull out a metronome really quickly and show you exactly what this looks like when practicing so that you know how to kind of slow it down before implementing it with a song or with a backing track. So here's a metronome. I'm going to just put it at 100 beats per minute. I'm going to take the G major scale and I'm literally going to just jump around 
with these notes randomly i'm not thinking about it i don't know what note i'm gonna go to first i'm just gonna think in my head okay g major let's do this random notes i can go g d e a b high g f sharp d e a g just random notes in time with the metronomes this is what that sounds like literally it guys this sounds maybe stupid but once you speed up the tempo a bit it can be pretty cool so this is 140 i'm gonna play them as eighth notes just random notes and i'm not playing the same thing i just played a while ago every time it's gonna be random it's cool it's weird, but it's cool. And it can sound cool in your improv because it'll allow you to create on the spot random lines and riffs that you can use in your solo. Here's an example of that. time to get into it deeper but obviously there's other scales other than major today we're just working with major and minor because what we do with major we can do with the minor but another cool scale eventually that you'll want to implement into your playing is a chromatic scale so when you're doing an exercise like this it's really cool sometimes to add chromatic notes that are not in the scale on purpose so that i can kind of sound off and cool but it's a vibe let me demonstrate i'm still doing the random notes i'm going to just add in random notes that aren't in g major to be able to do it without thinking about it it does come down to muscle memory which is why doing this kind of thing and implementing it in your practice routine is super important to do on a consistent basis so i encourage you guys to try out some of these techniques it worked for me i kid you not this is all i do in my improv i don't know any crazy lines and riffs and stuff i just know how to sit down with a metronome for a very long time and practice my scales in these three ways that i did demonstrate with you today so up and down that's the basic one, just up and down in that scalar motion. The second way is rhythmically changing up the rhythm of the scale. And then the third way is skipping to random notes. And then if you're feeling fancy and exciting, adding some of those crazy chromatic off notes that are not in the key of G to kind of make the listeners go, hmm, that was pretty cool. So that's the basic of scales, guys. If you want to learn more about the other tips and tricks, check out the next video. See you guys. <laughs>